Greetings class, I'm your lecturer for this course, Professor Kurth Gerson. Please remain quiet and prepare to take copious notes. Today, we're going to be discussing a seminal work in American television's golden age, Vince Gilligan's epic crime drama, Breaking Bad. Before we begin the discussion, please put down your pens and pencils and focus on the show's opening credits. Thank you for your attention. Now, please continue taking careful notes. Although we noticed an abundance of the color green and swirling wisps of smoke, perhaps the most salient visual feature of the open credit sequence is the integration of the periodic table of the elements within the very font of the show's text. The implication here is that the story that will unfold before us is fundamentally a story of chemistry. But what are the chemicals? But what are the elements? That's something I need to know about, okay? I mean, that, that affects me. You'll notice that the periodic table connection is visible as the names of cast members are credited. Additionally, the names of key members of the production crew are similarly displayed. This indicates that each individual working on the show is a chemical present in a large mixture of multiple chemicals. The notion illustrates a theme. The story of Breaking Bad, and perhaps every plot of every story, functions as a grand-scale chemical reaction. Taken to a larger, perhaps more cosmic, more philosophic sense, in the daily drama of our individual lives, each of us function as unique chemicals in an endless process of chemical reactions known as humanity, in the spherical beaker labelled Earth. <laughs> what? As I cast my gaze across the room, I perceive a stupor with interwoven currents of skepticism. I confess I cannot articulate the show's theme as elegantly as its protagonist character, the mild-mannered high school chemistry teacher, Walter White. Kindly pay attention as in this key early scene, White defines chemistry while telegraphing the central theme of the show. Chemistry. It is the study of what? Anyone? Ben. Chemicals. Chemicals! No! Chemistry is... Well, technically, chemistry is the study of matter. But I prefer to see it as the study of change. Now, just... Just think about this. Electrons. They... change their energy levels. Molecules. Molecules change their bonds. Huh? Elements, they combine and change into compounds. Well, that's... that's all of life, right? I mean, it's just... it's the constant, it's the cycle, it's... solution, dissolution, just over and over and over. It is growth, then decay, then transformation. It is fascinating, really. From White's explanation, and from our interpretation of the series' unique textual style, a style that equates individuals with chemicals, we should expect to see characters change their energy levels, form new bonds, and dissolve old bonds. We should expect to see significant character growth and decay. Most importantly, we should expect to see these characters undergo significant transformation. From this point, characters throughout the show are shown in various transformative states, in the very next scene, for example, White transforms from high school chemistry teacher to a cashier at a car wash. Just hand this cleaning disc to your car wash professional. Thank you. Come again. Add to this mixture the chemical Bogdan, and White undergoes another subtle transformation. He's not coming. He said he quits. I'm gonna run the register. Oh God, no. We talked about this. I'm short-handed, Walter. What am I to do? Walter? What am I to do? Okay. 
White's newly transformed state is that of a lowly car washer. Note how the students, who were previously bored during White's classroom display of chemical transformations, are now fascinated and delighted by their teacher's after-school display of vocational transformation. In a subsequent scene, we see White arriving at his surprise birthday party. While birthday parties don't signify specific, actual transformations, they do serve to remind us that our bodies are constantly in dueling, transformative states of growth and decay. Unfortunately for White, his body is suffering a growth of its own, unmitigated cell growth, a growth that portends his inevitable decay. Mr. White? Mr. White? Yes. You understood what I've just said to you? Yes. Lung cancer. Inoperable. Note, Walter White isn't the only character depicted undergoing change. His wife is revealed to also be undergoing a physical transformation. I mean, you're flat as a washboard. Oh. <laughs> you look awesome. She's not showing at all, is she? She's showing a little. Carmen, this is my sister, Marie. Nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> If you're gonna bring a gun, baby. You gotta bring enough guns. Furthermore, physical changes aren't the only changes the show depicts. Watch Uncle Hank's personality transform from obstreperous lout to serious and dedicated law enforcement professional, and then back to lout again. No, no, it's, it's just heavy. That's why they hire men. <laughs> Jesus, it's not gonna bite you, all right? Looks like Keith Richards with a glass of warm milk. <laughs> Hey, Walt, well, come here, everybody, listen up, listen up, listen up. I'm gonna give a little toast, a little toast to my brother-in-law. Come here. Walt, well, you got a brain the size of Wisconsin, but we're not gonna hold that against you. <laughs> but your heart's in the right place, man. Your heart's in the right place. We love you, man, we love you. Everybody, to Walt, the Strovia. The Strovia. <sighs> oh, shit, turn on channel three. <laughs> At which point we apprehended three individuals and placed them into custody. I'm proud to say the outstanding professionalism of my fellow agents at the Albuquerque District Office resulted in a substantial amount of methamphetamine being taken off the streets. Were any shots fired? No, ma'am. Our agents took the suspects by surprise. Damn, which is, the TV uh, does add 10 pounds. Ten However, pounds? However, there were a number of hey, firearms confiscated at the scene. Both of you. Yeah. Also Rick. a large amount of what? cash that was recovered. Gosh. Sorry. Uncle Hank is not the only character showing personality transformation in this episode. Stress factors brought about by White's physical decay spark significant personality transformations. Are you here to work or to be staring at the skies? Come on, let's go. Come on, man. Fuck you, Bogdan. What? I said fuck you and your eyebrows. How'd you find me? You're still in our filing system. When we first meet Jesse Pinkman, one of the show's major characters, White remarks on the young man's transformation from when the two were previously acquainted. Why are you here? I was curious. Honestly, I never expected you to amount to much, but methamphetamine? I didn't picture that. Later, Pinkman similarly remarks on White's transformation. You, you are not how I remember you from class. I mean, like, not at all. I gotta go. Wait, wait, hold on. Tell me why you're doing this. Seriously. Why do you do it? Money? 
Mainly. There you go. Nah, come on. Man, some straight like you giant stick up his ass all of a sudden at age, what, 60, he's just gonna break bad? I'm 50. It's weird, is all, okay? It, it doesn't compute. Listen. While Pinkman assumes that White has broken bad, i.e. transformed from good to evil, White prefers to think of his change as an awakening. I am awake. Awakening seems to be a curious way of perceiving a change, but in an earlier scene, one that takes place in the early morning shortly after a literal awakening, we see White keenly perceptive of his own transformation. <laughs> White views his current place in life as a nadir, a long, continuous decay that's removed him from dizzying heights to his current lowly station. His decision to transform himself into a prosperous methamphetamine cook suggests a defiant new stance he's taking in the face of a natural decline. White's decision to radically transform himself becomes the core dynamic of the series for the next five seasons. But how will the forces of nature react to his transformative efforts? Pay close attention to the scenery in the climax of the pilot episode. Notice anything striking? The boulder outcrop resembles a mighty pistol leveled directly at White's head. Now, perhaps you think this is purely coincidental. Clouds sometimes resemble rabbits, gnarled tree trunks often look like old men. So what's so special about a rock that looks like a pistol? Or a face, as some viewers maintain. Nothing you say? Perhaps you're right, but examine the composition of this shot. The episode's director, Vince Gilligan himself, could easily have framed the shot to exclude the big pistol-shaped rock. Are we supposed to believe he simply didn't notice it? Also, note that the positioning of the camera is perfectly aligned so that the pistol rock is pointed directly at White's forehead. Were the camera any higher or any lower, the rock would be obscured behind White's arm all pointing meaninglessly into the sky. Seconds later, after White accidentally discharges his weapon into the road, the same pistol-shaped rock appears again from a slightly different camera angle. Again, it's located perfectly within the frame, and again, it's leveled directly at White's head. The pistol-shaped rock is something that has been transformed through tremendous pressure and millions of years of time. If the lamentable Walter White had the ability to fully understand his situation, he might realize that, in response to his rash transformative action, nature will inevitably respond with a significant reaction, and the resulting pressure will cause White to change, but in ways that he never truly intended. <coughs> what? So, as Walter White claims, Chemistry is the study of change. I submit that Breaking Bad is similarly a study of change. So, how is this show so different from other shows of its time, or shows before its time? Examine the words of Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan in a recent interview. In the early days, I liked to think of Breaking Bad as an experiment in storytelling. And in fact, I still do. One of the things that intrigued me as a possibility of doing Breaking Bad was the idea of doing something that TV doesn't usually do, which is to show a character in a constant state of change. TV is very good at stasis. If you have something good, you stick with it. You stick with Sheriff Matt Dillon. You don't have him have a midlife crisis five years into gun smoke. But suddenly you don't want to be a sheriff no more. Well, that's a good thing. You know what you're going to get with these characters. They're comforting friends that you invite into your living room every week. TV is great at that, but I knew TV had done that a million times over. Now you can relieve and I love the idea with the of changing Walt step by step. I am not 
in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Throughout television history, principal characters have almost always been fairly static and remain the same throughout the show. Take Fonzie from Happy Days. Every episode, we know he'll be the same Fonzie. He might have a surprisingly emotional moment, such as when Richie almost dies, but we know he will emerge from even the most trying circumstances as the same character he was last week. Similarly, Arnold Drummond and his pal Dudley from Different Strokes are, in one very special episode, lured into the home of the owner of a local bicycle shop. You know that pizza would taste a whole lot better with a glass of wine. Uh, uh -huh. Sure, I have some. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll have just a sip. The bicycle man, a charismatic pederast, plies them both with alcohol. It certainly warms your tummy on a cold rainy day like today, huh? It's a show time and a pie time. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for Curly. Shows them cartoon pornography. and even manages to coax Dudley into the classic bathtub game of Neptune, King of the Sea. We'll play Neptune, King of the Sea. How do you play that? Oh, you know, it takes a lot of water, but bathtub, rub a shower. Oh, it's a, a great game. You're going to love it. So, is Arnold noticeably affected by his run-in with a child rapist? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> of course not. He's back to his same precocious antics the following week. Even Dudley seems to be unaffected, and he got molested. I'm sorry I don't have a tail for you to hang on. And so it went. Decades of television, hours of drama, thousands of characters unchanging from week to week. And that's what makes Breaking Bad a seminal work of television art. Every main character in the show, every one, makes a substantive, transformative change. New bonds are formed, old bonds dissolved. Energy levels ebb and flow. The only constant, the only thing that can be relied upon, is change. What, is this some kind of joke? Who the hell is this? That is not Doug. What are you talking about, Willis? That him! Jag är det där, det är det där. Och kan man komma runt det? Och vi ska få se personer som tar över.